So you are rejoining the Handyman Diaries on the way to a job. And this one you've seen a little bit of before. A uh, gal called me, I think last week, uh, asked me to uh, wire up her chicken coop. Like big old chicken coop needed wiring. Anyway, I got it like half roughed in last time. But right now I'm going out to finish the job. A uh, little bit of sunshine, the only potential snafu, potential little hiccup is that the ground is likely frozen and I've got a trench like a 30 foot line. So my approach to dealing with the problem of the frozen ground was just to do some other stuff first, you know, let the sun do its work, warm it up a little bit and get the rest of the structure wired up. This has a kind of like an outside lighting system and an indoor lighting system and the outdoor stuff I uh, put in conduit like you can see right here, you know, outdoor boxes and plastic conduit. That outdoor structure area is actually going to be covered. So it's kind of outdoor right now, but my sense is that at some point they're going to put some clear plex or poly roofing in there. Anyway, this whole wiring job got me thinking a lot about what is in a job. And by that I mean, you know, like what are the virtues of a job, of a certain job, or what are the, whatever the opposite of a virtue is, like the liabilities, like the crappy stuff of a job. And you know, the first thing I think a lot of people talk about or think about when they think about a job is like how much money you're gonna make. And is it, you know, is it good money, is it bad money? But to my mind, there are just so many more important things to think about if you're thinking about what kind of work you're doing. And one of them for me that's just like so important is the place, like the place where you're working. And as you've seen in my handyman videos, you know, I'm working all over the place, but primarily on other people's properties, indoor, outdoor, in their attics, in their crawl spaces, etc. I tend to roll with that pretty well, but I would say I've got a preference for working outdoors. It just really kind of suits me and is where I feel mo most comfortable. All right, now I don't know how you guys lay a trench, but I think most people rent a trencher and I've done that a few times, but this was one of those trenches, it's like 30 feet long, it's gotta be two feet deep, and I just figured I'd do it by hand. I was kinda testing myself to see how long it would take, and it took me an hour and a half maybe to lay this trench, maybe two hours of work all together on the trench itself, and dang, will that thing warm you up. You know, this was a cold day, right around freezing, and before too long, you're down in your shirt sleeves. So, so what is in a job? Well, well, in this job, you've got the physical part of it. And that for me is just maybe like the best part about doing this job. I love the, the kind of hands-on technical parts, but there's something great about getting a workout and working a job at the same time. I actually came back the next day to finish out that trench measure the depth and lay the wire in it. And with the wire in the trench, I needed to connect it up to the box. There's a big old panel here with just a ton of open slots. So there was plenty of room for these lines. Now, you'll see that I put two conductors in. That was just kind of my thinking. If you're gonna trench a line, you might as well put in enough wire in the hole for future use. So right now, I'm only activating one of these breakers, but in the future, if they wanna expand in the coop, they can use the other wire. And then for you uh, wiring aficionados out there, I uh, just added two breakers, uh, 20 that I'm actually not even gonna use. It's just gonna be dead in the house in case I wanna use it in the future. And then a 20 GFCI that'll run all the receptacles in the coop to keep them GFI protected. All right, so with the panel buttoned up and that didn't really take too long, it was time to bury the wire. And that kind of goes uh, in two stages. One is to bury the wire, you know, put some soil on top of the wire and bring the level up. But then uh, the other is to lay down your caution tape. This is just required. You lay your caution tape above the wire, you know, like about a foot above the wire. That way if someone's digging, hopefully they're gonna hit that tape and be like, whoa, I've got wire down below uh, before they hit the wire. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? All right, 
right, so those wires come into the structure inside this old feeder band. So I just need to tack them here and create a junction box. All right, here's just a walkthrough. Uh, you've got your outdoor receptacle, GFI protected, and your outdoor light, which is on a sensor, so it's just hardwired. And then inside, you've just got a row of lights here and receptacles. There is the other outside light here, which is on a sensor. And then you just have a receptacle here. This switches all the lights, and you've got a row of outside lights there. Power comes in through the cabinet back in here. And that's it. So I brought Tank along on this one. I've got to go over and assess some water damage and place a bid. Uh, but the reason Tank's come along is that it's at a sport animal clinic. So never having been there, I'm not too sure what goes on at the sport medical clinic. So I asked around a little bit. Now, I was kind of wondering, is it like a bunch of Pomeranians playing tennis or badminton or whatever? Uh, it turns out that it is a place where people will bring their dogs who get too heavy to move. You know, they just like get too fat or whatever. Um, so it's kind of like a Richard Simmons type dog clinic for uh, overweight animals. At least that's part of what I've heard. Maybe if you throw your ACL on the basketball court and you're a golden retriever, you go there. Anyway, All right, here's the deal with the dog sport place. Uh, basically, they just got like a place they wash the dogs and it's just trashed. It was never tile. It just had some kind of cheap wallboard up there and just, you know, got mushy and gross and moldy and whatnot. So I'm just going to throw them a quote to retile it and see where it goes. I've got a little side project going on. This is our utility room and I'm installing a security camera system. This is like the master hub here with the um, monitor screen here. This monitor is all four cameras. I think you could do four. Actually, you could do eight cameras. You got eight ports right here. But anyway, I've only got four. I'm gonna run them, uh, run the cords up into my attic. And the system is plugged into a Wi-Fi extender. What's cool about that is that I can keep the uh, system here in the pantry, but then just view all the cameras on my phone or on my computer. So I don't need to have this thing like out in the living room or whatever. So this is just hidden away in the pantry. I'll install the cameras and then show you the full setup on the phone. All right, so I've got four cameras and I just ran my four wires up into the attic. Then we can feed them out around the structure. And all I'm doing now is just tidying up the wires down below. Just want to get these looking pretty good not too messy and they're going to go up into the ceiling as you can see and i'm going to run them in some conduit this is just straight up uh, automotive conduit it's like the stuff i use if i'm you know putting like lights on my truck or whatever but i think it'll work pretty well in this pantry you can get uh, lighter stuff at your hardware store you know like white or whatever to match your house but since this is in the pantry i'm not too worried about it And then this is the second camera here that I just installed and it gives you a view of 
kind of like the driveway and people walking up to the front door. All right, so I've got two of the four cameras set up and I'm just gonna check it out on the app. And the thing is, they've got pretty nice resolutions. So this is the one by the front door. This is the truck cam. I guess I'm out there, I can wave to myself. It is running on the Wi-Fi and that way I can access it via my phone, which is pretty sweet. And then this is the uh, Dilio in the pantry. I don't imagine we'll use this as much as our phones and computers, but, and then there's a shut off back here. It's on the side, yeah, where you can just kill the monitor if you want to. All right, after that, I had to cruise across town at top speed in the rain and the ice and all that to get working on a garage rehab job. Now this garage is not getting like a full renovation. Instead, it's just kind of getting tuned up. And uh, what I was asked to do was to pull some of the nasty siding, you know, like the nastiest of the nasty and replace that. I'm also uh, replacing some of the soffit. I think all the soffit. It's just basically, basically this garage is like a squirrel hotel. And we're switching over to human occupancy in this garage. That's kind of the idea. So. There's the mother load. Check out all those little acorns. And you know how it is with jobs like this. You rip off one board and then you kind of think, well, I think I ripped the next one off too because it's a little bit rotten. And you can really just never stop. But uh, the main damage was on the bottom here. And that's simply because there's no gutter on this building and the water is kind of splashing on the ground and splashing up on the siding. The awesome thing about working in the rain is that all that gutter water is also pouring down your neck the whole time you're out there. So it's kind of like a double bonus kind of thing. All right, here is your glimpse at these siding patches done on a cold day. So I'm gonna have to come back to paint them, obviously. But anyway, we've got a patch over here. This side just needed a few nails. Otherwise, the siding's in pretty good shape. And then I patched up these lower boards. So I wrapped it up on that garage project for today. Uh, it still needs the human door replaced, uh, soffit replaced, and obviously once it warms up and it's not you know, wet and snowy and whatnot, I'll have to uh, paint those new pieces of siding. So there's work there to be done, but at least I got a start on it. Anyway, that wraps up this episode of my Handyman Diaries. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. This is not necessarily a video about how to do it, but instead, you know, it's just like the story of how I did it. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one.